Welcome Japanese woodblock print collectors and enthusiasts. As they say in Japan, mei wa kokoro no mado, or the eyes are the mirror of the soul. Today I thought it would be interesting to explore and appreciate how different Japanese artists depicted the eyes of their characters in woodblock prints. I have a sampling of artists from the Edo and Meiji eras and will review them. But first, a little history. As in most things, Japanese woodblock print aesthetics were heavily influenced by Chinese woodcuts and paintings from the Ming Dynasty. Later, the Japanese ukiyo-e schools like the Utagawa, Katsukawa, Tori, and others established their own conventions, and of course, many students, once they'd mastered the styles of their teachers, developed their own artistic approach. Japanese art has a tradition of de-emphasizing facial expressions and relying on clothing, composition, and poses of the characters to show emotion. This is especially true in the genre of bijinga, or pictures of beautiful women. Their faces and eyes were highly idealized. A good example of this is Suzuki Harunobu from the 1760s. He usually depicted full body poses in his prints, so we can't see larger examples of his eyes, but they are the tiniest of slits with no recognizable eyelid or eyelash. Slim, pointy slivers with a solid black iris. A little later, in the 1790s, Utamaro, one of the most famous Bijinga artists, shows us this style of eye. These thin, wide almond shapes with a large black iris and a thick eyelash line above the eye, adding to the allure of the face. Keisai Eisen was also famous for his pictures of Bijinga. Fun fact, Eisen was frequently found drunk in brothels and became the, became the owner of one himself. I want to show you something interesting here, a new style of eye. If we zoom in, you can see it more clearly. We have what looks like eyelashes above and below the eye, but they are unnaturally covering a large portion of the eye from the top and the bottom. So it almost looks like a crosshatch shading designed to give the eyes more three-dimensionality. And look at her left eye, how it almost wraps around the face. So remember this type of eye because we'll be seeing more of it. Now let's talk about Toshusai Sharaku. He was a renegade and broke from popular design conventions. Before Sharaku, pictures of actors or yakusha-e would feature exaggerated facial expressions, but still be pretty homogenized and safe. Sharaku redefined the actor print, and a big part of his genius was how expressive and individual his eyes were. They really impart the emotion of the character. Here is where I'll introduce the mie. The mie is often the subject of kabuki actor prints. The mie is a powerful and emotional pose struck at a climax point in a play where an actor freezes. It basically says, all eyes on me. During this pose, the actor's eyes are open wide and many times the actors will cross his eyes to show anger. The practice of Mie is said to have started with the actor Ichikawa Danjuro I in the late 1600s. In 1814, Kunisada gives us this wonderful kabuki print of Ichikawa Danjuro VII in the role of Kan Shoujo. In this pose, we can see how wide and bulging these eyes are, made even larger by the kabuki makeup. We can also see the thin black lines that in this case don't seem to be eyelashes, but rather shading to give the eye a more pronounced 3D look, like they're popping out of his head. The small irises are gray with a black pupil and rolled inward in a typical mie look. This exploration wouldn't be complete without including Hokusai. Hokusai was extremely versatile but the majority of his prints were focused on scenes of everyday people going about life. Therefore, we don't get many close-ups of eyes in his work. We see them as black dots, diamonds, or curved lines. But when we look at his manga or sketchbooks, we can see his drawing ability when it comes to eyes and facial expressions. And if we look at his yokai or ghost prints, 
we can also see some great examples of his imaginative eye shapes. Like Hokusai, most of Hiroshige's prints were wide views of landscapes and everyday people. But even in these scenes, I think he imparts a lot of expression on these smaller scale faces. We can see some larger faces and eyes in his fan prints. In this fan print, we can see a taller eye than we're used to. And look at her left eye. It's sticking out from the side of the face like it was cut out and pasted on. Now let's have a look at Toyoharu Kurichika, a master of actor prints. Starting with some prints from his aptly named O Kubi, or Large Head Portrait Series. Here you can see unnaturally large bulging eyes. Also, notice the blue gradated shading that adds to the roundness and the stylized cutout appearance of the far eye, like it was pasted onto the face. I'm going to introduce you to the Japanese term sanpaku here. Sanpaku means three whites. This expression applies to people where you can see the white of the eye at the top or the bottom of the iris. So basically you're seeing the white on three sides of the eye. In Eastern culture, this is supposed to indicate a physical or mental imbalance. So go ahead after this video and check the mirror and see if you have sampaku eyes. In this series of beautiful women, we can see a close up of the eye and the stylized eyelashes or shading on the eye. And here's another example from his 36 Good and Evil Beauties series. And here's a print from his 36 famous Tokyo restaurants. I used my magnifying glass and really zoomed in on this one. Finally, let's have a look at ukiyo-e master Yoshitoshi. Like Hokusai, Yoshitoshi could basically draw whatever he wanted in any style from traditional to realistic. Here's a great example of an actor print. Look at this large stylized sanpaku eye with a small iris and gradated blue coloring that gives it emphasis and depth. In this print, we can see the uh, top eyelashes over the white of the eye. In these sketches Yoshitoshi made for woodblock prints, we can see how he developed the eye shape. So we've learned that everything starts in China and Japanese ukiyo-e schools and artists developed their own ways of depicting the eye, including the unique mie gaze, only found in Japanese kabuki. One interesting side note is that Lafcardio Hearn, a uh, translator and journalist in the 1890s, showed prints and paintings from Europe of European people to uh, Japanese children, and they were shocked at how ugly Europeans were. They said they looked like monsters. On the converse, at the Japan Society in England, one of the members said that there could never have been any lady like the ladies of Japanese prints, and he described the faces as absolutely insane. So it doesn't matter what side of the world you're on, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Until next time, like and subscribe, don't forget to check your eyes for sampaku, and happy collecting.